It's about that time again, Boom or Bust episode three, the series where you design subwoofer enclosures, I 3D print them, and we put them head to head to see whose is the loudest. It was only a matter of time until somebody submitted a deckware enclosure. So today we have something that you might seem familiar, however, with a slight twist. This is the deckware wicked one, but sliced in half because this first season is single driver so obviously we couldn't have the full wicked one so this wicked one has been sliced in half so we're obviously missing the other chamber for the other driver where the two drivers will combine in the final mouth here but with this one here we have the single driver on one side and it has the whole mouth to itself now i don't think that's ever been tested before not to my knowledge so i have no idea if that's even going to work cutting off the other half with the other driver in it and giving the whole mouth and, and whatever to one driver but that's what this series is all about experimentation and seeing what works and what doesn't without spending a bunch of money and time building it in real scale. Now most of you will consider this a horn box but for the most part the band that you're going to be listening to is actually going to behave more like a fourth order band pass. We have the sealed chamber here for the driver and the actual horn section is very very short and the fact that it has a compression chamber, a little chamber here behind the driver before the horn starts, this is going to give it a Helmholtz mode as well. Uh, the lower frequencies you're going to be listening to mostly the pressure generated by the driver in the sealed box only, the horn's not going to be working at those lower frequencies. Then at some point in the middle we're probably going to have a Helmholtz mode but before finally at the very upper range of the frequencies you're going to be playing through this you'll get the horn start doing its thing in quarter wave. So probably you're getting the benefits of having the horn style sound on the upper frequencies where you've got the kick drums and the impacts and the impulses but without needing such a massive folded horn to get the lower frequencies resonating in quarter wave mode as well. And I think there's been some speculation over the years as to how good these things are, whether they actually work, whether they actually sound good um, but from my initial testing and listening with this tiny a little miniature box with only one driver I can tell you that it is impactful it doesn't really seem to drop very low from my initial testing but my god it is transient kick drums absolutely slam you in the chest I mean the tests I've done are all scaled by times six speed so it's very fast like doo -doo -doo -doo. but compared to the other enclosures that I have tested so far which is only a couple it seems to have some freaking poke about it so it'll be really interesting to see how it sounds now naturally, this being a bandpass style enclosure with the driver mounted inside, I can't glue the lid on. So, in true hexibase form, we're going to be blue tacking the lid on. Now blue tack at this small scale with these small weights is actually monstrously strong. And once this is on top and clamped down for about five minutes, letting the blue tack squish to a very thin layer, it's going to have massive amounts of grab strength on this top and it is not going to affect the tests in any way, shape or form. At the end of the video, you'll probably see me try and pry it off and it will take me some good effort. And yeah, there weren't any mounts for like screw holes or anything in this uh, STL that was sent over. So as always, first things first, let's get it on the Dayton Dats V2 and see what the impedance sweep looks like of this thing. So yeah, this looks suspiciously similar to the two ported boxes that we tested before. We've got two impedance spikes with a big valley in the middle. And the valley is at about 230 hertz, so that is likely where this enclosure system combined is converting the most energy given to the cone into air displacement out of the poor mouth exit of this enclosure here. The driver wants to move incredibly freely at about 150 hertz, which is going to be um, interesting, possibly not that great for our lower frequency test at 25 scaled hertz at the 150 here. Yeah, massive impedance spike there that's going to get going with barely any power whatsoever. And we've got another impedance spike up here at about 310, 320 hertz mark. Now, I did also run an impedance sweep with just the sealed section. So I just put a top on the sealed box behind the driver and left the rest of the line open. And this is what it looks like. So it's seems that the air spring in that little sealed chamber on the back is around about 175, 180 hertz there. But once we put the other half of the enclosure on the other end of the driver, that all changes of course and the two impedance spikes appear here. Now I've never done an impedance sweep of a horn before and it's difficult finding pictures of impedance sweep graphs of horns on Google. I think I did find one, but what I was expecting to see from a horn was much more peaks and valleys there as the horn grabs hold of and lets go of the cone as it goes up the frequency band. And when I initially ran this sweep, I was like, oh, it doesn't really look like what I was expecting to see from a horn. However, if we zoom in here and take a look, there are actually some baby little peaks and valleys going all the way up on the higher stuff, starting at around about 500 hertz here and up. You can see we've got one impedance peak here at about 600 hertz, then a valley in between the two at about 700, and then another impedance spike at about 850, and a few more up the range 
changed. See, that truncated horn section on the end of this enclosure isn't probably going to be doing much for the frequencies you're most interested in listening to, and it's going to be acting mostly like a fourth order band pass. But I suspect that that truncated horn on the end being there will actually cause this to have some very good transient response on the very upper frequencies of whatever you'll be listening to, and possibly will perform very well with rock music with like hard kick basses, that kind of thing. It might sound really good, and the bottom end of electric guitars, palming, and bass guitars. So with the sort of tuning of this enclosure, where it's happiest performing being higher than last week, which was about 15 scaled hertz, I suspect this might actually flatten out the dB readings when we get to it, and the lower 25 scaled hertz might not be that potent, but hopefully we'll see some higher scores on the slightly higher frequencies here. So it looks a bit like a horn, but pretty much a fourth order band pass. I'm sure you're all dying to see how this sounds. So let's whack it in the test cabin, crank up the amplifier, and uh, give it some tests. I couldn't actually decide what orientation to have the box in the cabin here. So rather than just guess it and maybe miss out on some performance, I thought I'd actually measure three different positions. So here I put the box in one facing the sidewall here with the kind of uh, horn getting gradually further away from the side piece, kind of maybe extending the horn a little bit. One with it right up against the back of the cabin and one with it firing forwards here at the sensor and dropped the RT microphone in next to the SPL sensor, opened up Room EQ Wizard and dropped a sweet and these are the three results and as you can see from these three results you've got the side one there the one at the back and the one firing forward that the one firing to the back generally gives the louder response across the board the one firing to the back and the one firing to the side were quite similar throughout the mid-range but the one firing at the back just had better response on the lower end and that will be due to the Helmholtz mode and the um, and a little bit of the quarter wave mode maybe coming into play here with having the pressure point at the back but for us with the horn firing at the back was loudest so here's some damage.
Time to see what this does on the meter. Now, as always, we're going to be testing with the door open first, giving this massive Helmholtz boost, as you've seen in the previous episodes. So let's give it 25 scaled hertz first, which is 150 hertz in real life, and see how loud we do. Okay, 145.2. Now, obviously I can't see the driver, so I can't see how close to mechanical excursion limit is, but before all these tests, in my own testing, I put a Perspex top on the box and had a look at how the driver was moving at each frequency. And I calibrated at this 25 hertz frequency, anything more than about six or seven watts on the watt meter here cause it to move like to extremes. So I don't really wanna to go too much above the seven watts mark. It was starting to pick up some dBs a little bit above the seven watts mark or 145.2 there but I don't really want to push it too far. I might just keep it a little square. Yeah, only got 0.3 extra and I, I bumped it right up to sort of beyond 10 watts there. So 145.3, we'll call it, is the absolute maximum this box is going to do at 25 scaled hertz. You know, I think that regardless of whatever box we put in this cabin, it's going to be like a 144 at least at 25, just because of that crazy Helmholtz mode. Okay, let's now go up to the 33 hertz test. This is where it might get interesting because this box starts to really ring at the higher frequencies. Now for this one, we can go all the way up to 15 watts. There we go, 15.7 on the watt meter and a 135.7. I can't remember off the top of my head whether that's less than my air reported box. I feel like it did a 138, but um, okay, cool. It's we're still relatively low frequency, 33 hertz. This is kind of under the optimal range of this enclosure. When I was listening to it, it seemed to really like the 45s and stuff. So 135.7, now let's reset and hit her with a 45 scaled hertz being a 270. So again, we can go up to 15 watts. Fifteen point two. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. Wow, forty-five hertz scaled, and we have a one forty point two. Do you remember the other boxes we've tested? They were like a one twenty-seven. Wow, this thing is potent on the higher frequencies. Sheesh, and that's not even the um, that's not even the Helmholtz mode of this enclosure or anything like that. That is pretty pretty nuts. It's it's outside of the Helmholtz mode and it's also outside of the cabin quarter wave resonance. Ha dang! Now can it continue to hold its own up to the 60 hertz mark, which is uh, in real life a 360. point nine and a 136 six that's still freaking great compared to what we've seen on the ported boxes we've been doing like down in the sort of 120s mark so that is this is absolutely monstrously loud across the board like if this cabin i'm just gonna write this down like if this if this was a real life cabin here this is pretty flat given an extreme cabin 145 135 140 and 136 compared to what we've seen before that is very flat this is very loud okay so now we're going to close off the cabin door just completely sealing it off and i suspect we're going to get actually similar kind of results here because it wasn't really using the helmholtz mode to do those nice high scores on the higher frequencies so let's get the door we're gonna go up to about seven watts like we did before. Oh, it's still climbing. Right, what is it? Oh, well, there, there was 10 or 11 watts. A 136.2, that's actually not bad. Fifteen point three watts on the meter and a 132.4. This is looking pretty decent still. It's already loud to my ears, this bit. Fifteen point three watts and we have a one thirty eight point seven. Not bad. Fifteen 
15.5 on the watt meter and a 131.1. We are above, we, we are consistently above 130 dBs across the board at every frequency, door open and door closed. We need to blow away some of those excess dBs there. That is loud. So that gives us an average with the door open of a 139.45 dBs and with the door closed, a 134.6. Putting this half wicked one fourth order style enclosure solidly into first place, way above both my benchmark area and the Derek V5 with about a four to five dB lead across the board. It's funny because I've generally always not been that into fourth orders. I've always thought, well, a fourth order is just going to give you a sealed box low end style response with a bump on the higher end. And I'm thinking that's not really what I'm about. I really like the smooth lows and stuff like that. And I thought if I want to get what I want, then a sixth order would be better for me rather than a fourth. But I don't know, looking at this, we're getting still very usable response right down to the low end, similar to how it was with my aeroported box, but real emphasis on those higher frequencies, which I'm actually coming more into now with just listening to more normal style music that isn't just rebased stuff and I'm really enjoying the chest pounding eyeball wobbling transients and higher frequencies that actually this thing scaled up would definitely provide. I think this sets the scene for what's to come. This is by no means a super good horn enclosure and it's not an amazing band pass either. It's kind of a weird thing or a bit of both but it does seem to perform really well here so I think that given some more really dialed in enclosures maybe some horn some quarter wave stuff, some sixth orders, some fourth orders that are really dialed in, I think we could get really impressive scores here. But yeah, I guess we'll see how it goes in a future season because we will be moving on to two drivers at some point in the future down the line where obviously we'll want to test the true wicked one with the two drivers. So it'll be interesting to see how much louder adding that second driver makes and that will tell us really how well this single driver enclosure is doing compared to the dual one. But I mean, compared to the ported boxes, it seems to be doing all right. <laughs> If you want to design an enclosure for this series, you need to watch this video here. It explains all the instructions and everything you need to know to put together a design, submit it over to me, and maybe have it printed and featured in one of these episodes. If you're interested in supporting this series, either by sponsoring a sticker somewhere on the cabin enclosure here, or by having a sponsored message or segment in the videos, give me a shout. Let me know there is an email address in the description. I hope you enjoyed this one, and guys, I will see you next week for episode four. I am excited. Excited. There's some crazy designs that have been sent in and I haven't decided which one I'm printing next yet, but either way, it's going to be good. In case you were interested how stuck this top on is after all those tests. Ah, I feel like I'm going to snap the plastic. Oh, so wait at that edge. You have to like sit on it and just let all of the strings unwind. Ah. Oh. There we go.